So that's it. This is Nigeria right now. The famous Abia Towers, where you know the motto of Abia State, God's own state. <laughs> There are four main funding options for every state. It's even the constitution, the allocation, internal generated uh, uh, revenue, grants and loans. So if you wanted to attract grants yeah. and friendly loans from development partners, especially outside Nigeria, your processes have to be sufficiently transparent. They need to see your books. One, two, um, you need to be upfront with your counterpart funding. And it takes a lot of courage to be upfront with counterpart funding. Many states don't go far. Mm. They, 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 they seem to value their one billion or two billion uh, over and above the bird in the bush, as it were. But I decided to check all boxes. So I paid one billion, almost one billion, kind of phone to New Map. To New Map. Okay. And that gave us um, an offer of um, ninety about ninety eight million US dollars to do um, almost ten roads and do tunneling okay. in the most vulnerable part of Abia, the okay. Ndegro flood plain. Okay. So, unfortunately, the COVID years came. So, the contractor couldn't procure the boring equipment to do five meters beneath the houses in Ndegro and do a tunnel that would have been six kilometers in length to water side. That would have been the first of its kind in in, in, in this part of the world. So, uh, Turkey, where they were procuring the equipment shut down throughout the COVID period and they couldn't. But however, we went and renegotiated with World Bank and they decided to give us more roads. So a total number of about 10 roads. Ungwa Road, Obohe Road, okay. um, Aja Road, Ebadan, um, Onyebuchi. Okay. Total number of 10, Orata. Ten roads. Ten roads. In an area that had not seen asphalted road in 65 years. Hmm. So, and these roads have been done, most of them. Some of them are, about one or two of them are ongoing, but the rest are ready. Okay. So, um, and because of the fact that we couldn't get the boring equipment, we couldn't draw down on the 98. World Bank took back uh, about uh, almost 20 million US dollars. So we, but we were able to draw down. Uh, the contract was able to draw down uh, 70 okay. something million years uh, Let me also say it here that um, these funds are not available to the governor or the accountant general. World Bank. It goes straight to, to the project. Exactly, it goes straight to the project. World Bank monitors milestones and pays. Uh, in fact, milestones are considered and uh, approvals for disbursements are usually given from Washington. It has nothing to do with the state government. So it's not even possible that even a, a state government that is careless, you can't have access. Okay. So, But the benefit to the people is what is profound. And it was attracted by the government. Exactly. Well. Attracted by my government. And um, so it's a facility for 30 years at less than 2%. Okay. So, so if anybody sees uh, any funding that is uh, more friendly than that anywhere in the world. Two percent. Two percent. I'm spread over thirty years, and um, there is another one. Okay. I'm sure that um, um, as I exit office on the May 29th, the incoming administration will have fifty million US dollars or thereabout to do five hundred kilometers of road, counterpart funding, all the processes, everything done. Um, I may. 
I have the glorious opportunity to do the flag off. Okay. But the bulk of the money will be available, available for, for the incoming. incoming administration. Here again, um, the, the, the interest rate, it has 10 years moratorium. Okay. So during the life of this administ the incoming administration, is not going to pay one dime. Okay. Uh, and then spread over 20 years. Okay. And less than 1%, 0.006% interest. You know, so it's more or less uh, uh, something that is given to you to the work and all of that. So um, these are some of the things that this administration has achieved. So the third one yes. is African Development Bank. Okay. That is the one that is targeted at sanitation, stormwater management, and water control in particular. Um, that has not dropped as I speak, but just at the verge of, I'm sure between now and December, that'll be ready. So as you're exiting, it's going to drop? Of course, you know. Um, you know so my effort, the effort of my administration on Portacot Road was just a stopgap effort to, to, to make sure that uh, things keep happening because that particular road, our people are passionate about yes. it, you know. But to have done drainage end to end, and I'm sure that as that uh, facility drops, but the country will be a thing of the past also. So these are some of the things that uh, we have achieved and we have left in stock. I'm going to hand over to the next administration. <laughs> I'm usually very reluctant to do a postmortem on um, uh, the government of my uh, predecessor. Uh, the reason is that it is on account of the things he wasn't able to do that I was employed by Abians mm -hmm. on the 20th, on, 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 on 2 to 15 in the first place. But suffice it to say that um, every government. Uh, once you come, you will see some deficits yes. in terms of infrastructure. Yes. You will also see a few things that were undone. Um, um, in terms of um, Naira and Kobo, um, I can't... Uh, uh, there was really not much to uh, inherit. I didn't expect much. Uh, because uh, a government that is in, in, in in the process of working for the people has to spend money. But I inherited uh, a fairly stable state. I inherited a, a state with great prospects and with great opportunities for an incoming administration to make impact. So I quickly went to work to set up what I thought was going to be a um, foundation for me to uh, stamp my own uh, signature. Yes. Uh, part of what I needed to do was to find a way to deal with the civil service bureaucracy. So we uh, set up an ABIA economic advancement team, which is a backroom team uh, of experts and uh, private sector people to advise, first of all, to turn all my uh, dreams to work plans and then to develop strategies that are scalable, strategies that are, um, uh, that can be uncoupled, uh, strategies that can be realigned, uh, and then um, do some monitoring and evaluation. So mm, to bring down the neck of the civil servants to say, if you're unable to do this within this time frame, then we have um, a team that was ready to, you know, just seeing you uh, drive it, sir, it's, uh, it's amazing, really. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I do this often. Wow. I do this often, you know, that uh, uh, the difference between Okezi Pass and the Gopro. The one that is permanent is Okezi Pass, the Gopro is the permanent. That one, that one we should go. No. So this is Okezi Pass. This is the real you. <laughs> you will never sorrow. You will never cry, you, and you will never mourn. It is too. well with you. God bless you too. Jesus Thank you, sir. Bless us. Bless us. You won't take away patience from him. You won't take away humility from him. You won't take away listening ear. You won't take away humor. You won't take away trying to please everybody. Because uh, they will never want to hurt even 
when it looks impossible, he will try to find a way. He's an exceptional human being in many respects. I'm not sure I've ever had to deal with a man as humble and humane as Dr. Kezi Ikbazo. He treats everybody the same. He listens intently and intensely. And in listening to you, you may not realize that you are speaking to one of the most brilliant men in the world. And I mean that. This is a governor, like I can tell you, as of today, he has done more than 230 completed road projects in Abia. 130, and I have the list. In fact, the first time we made that compilation, even me, as somebody who has been around him since 2015, I was shocked. As you're exiting, what angles do you think that you can push further, narrating your story? Um, thank you very much. Let me start by admitting that um, uh, we were a bit uh, media shy. And I've said it, I think, um, before, that yes. my background as a teacher um, prepared me uh, not to... Um, not my words to go ahead of my work, but my work should go ahead of my words. Hmm. Uh, but I have learned that uh, there is nothing like silent achievement. Sorry. And there is nothing like um, um, my work will speak for me. Uh, that is why at times even you get to hear um, about e-projects or audio projects, projects that don't exist on ground, but people mount them and uh, as if they were. Um, so I, I take that, that blame. But beyond that, sincerely speaking, from um, my soul and my spirit, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a happy man. Um, whereas I will take the blame for not uh, shouting from the rooftops, but I, I'm a happy man because um, I'm a man of very strong convictions and strong conscience. And once I am happy with what I am doing, mm. uh, that I have... Uh, 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 you know, expected uh, an honest day's job. I, I, I go to sleep that day. But the good thing about our philosophy mm. is that we we came with a mindset that we're not going to abandon any, any project. project. Or rather, we're not going to allow the projects of my predecessor to suffer. Because what is at stake is the taxpayer's money. Mm. And um, it is a mark of irresponsibility for any leader to walk away from a good project from his predecessor you know so there are a few projects which i inherited from my predecessor like the that we're working i understand with. like the government house the new government yes, house new, the, the new government house <laughs> We are replacing the dwarfish bungalows that were built in 1956 with a two-story multi-specialist hospital in this ancient premises. I commission the Abia multi-specialist hospital I pray to the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. God the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Kezi Bazo has done a lot, a lot in this state in terms of health sector. 
in all the local governments. He has republished, he has renovated, he has reconstructed, and he has constructed all available health centers that needed you know, support in the whole uh, senatorial zone. So I give kudos to him. He has done, he has transformed health in this state. These projects have been unveiled, and today we are having this conversation uh, about when you are just going to exit office. Are you fulfilled? Yeah, I am a very, very fulfilled person extremely fulfilled um, in the sense that um, this was a journey of 96 months and um, that I am first holding two that um, Abia has remained very safe and secure and three that I have been able to walk till the last day the last minute of my time in Abia gives me a special sense of fulfillment because I promised Abia that I was going to resume on the first day in 2015 and that I was going to give every minute of my time as governor to Abia and I have kept that promise. Um, again, that we've been able to complete these projects despite the challenges that came uh, with this transition it's a testament to my belief and what I preach in politics. I preach a few things in politics which I want people to know me for. One of them is um, peace and um, what I call social mobilization. Um, my approach to dissenting voices uh, is different. I believe in tolerance as part and parcel of democracy. Tolerance is important. Um, Abians will miss a very, very tolerant leader. A leader that believes in the power of persuasion, conversation, discussions. It may take time. A leader that has empathy. Empathy for the people. Um, I'm completing Fox Road today because of my empathy for the average trader in area because by the time we were set to complete that project we had the lockdown after that lockdown people had stayed at home for several months and they started complaining we at that time had done binding course it was looking beautiful if you see it if you're not an engineer you think the road was ready but the engineers advised me in Ministry of works that that was just the binding course that i should wait for them to establish the wearing course, otherwise that the rule will fail. But Aria Aria was sending delegation that I don't need to, that I should just open. Mm. So the better part of my um, benevolence overtook me and I opened that road. And the road, of course, failed. But it also gave me the opportunity to now deploy rigid pavements on some sections of that road. And I, I can guarantee that that road will stand the test of time today. I went to teach, yes, yes I do often. And um, a secondary school girl, who I was trying to share some thoughts with, with them in their classroom. And when it came to the time for questions, I asked the pupils or students, do you have questions for your teacher? And one of them raised her hand and said, sir, that she has heard so much about Dr. Sam Bakwe and that um, she thinks we need to immortalize. And I gave her my promise at that moment.
son this word in the name of God the Father, Amen. the Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I pray that all those who will fly on this road will find prosperity. Amen. They will find good health. Amen. Bad words we don't I, see. I, I never met the man called Fox. I don't know where he comes from. And, uh, but for whatever contributions he made, we appreciate. But uh, talking about contemporary development of Igbo land, yes. we need to bring to the fore these icons and these leaders that served us well yes. and served selflessly. That is why we now renamed. So finally, I want to be remembered as somebody whose commitment to the people has nothing to do with the outcome of an election. If I say that I'm going to deliver X, Y, Z, it doesn't matter what the outcome of the election is. I will certainly deliver X, Y, Z, unless something happens. That is beyond my control. This is why I'm a fulfilled person. All the promises, 90% of the promises I made to my people, I delivered on them. Uh, one will now wonder, okay, having done all this, what next going forward? Um, as I always say, I have um, three options. Um, the first option is go back to Ever State University. Um, resume my lectureship work. Mm -hmm. And that's your first law? Yes. Of course, I have indicated to my department that I, I was getting ready to come back. But in the interim, I'll need to um, sleep for two, three, four, five days mm -hmm. and then um, <laughs> uh, play a little bit with my family. You, you, it might interest you to know that I have a little granddaughter. Yes, and, um, we're, we're aware of that. Yeah, <laughs> so... Um, she will have time with her granddad. Yes, <laughs> and uh, you can't believe it. My 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 little twins now, the boy and the girl, they started playing soccer. But uh, wow, I, I was watching them on video, you know, and they wouldn't even let me carry them. <laughs> so I, I have time to do some bonding. Yes, and then um, do some little bit of family work, and then um, um, I'm contemplating depending on where um, the wind of um, adventure takes me. I, am, I want to do a book on um, uh, evidence-based leadership or scientific leadership, you know, because that paradigm of leadership has helped me. Okay. You know, we have been able to solve a few problems that had defined solutions before we came, just by thinking strategically, you know. So um, I have quite a few things uh, in the border, you know, to do. Uh, luckily, I'm still very strong, mm. and uh, I think uh, I'm ready. Experience, they say, is the best teacher. Yeah. You, have, you have had the experience yeah. of being governor for eight years. Yes. So this person who is coming now is just more like uh, a fresher. Mm -hmm. Is there some footnote you leave behind? Is there something that you leave behind for this person to pick? Certainly, um, I'm ready with my hand over notes. I do not know if a handover note can be comprehensively comprehensive, mm. but we try to put a lot of uh, annexures, attachments, and we try to also um, um, lead out to the direction that we think Gambia needs to go. But most importantly, I did not have the privilege of a roadmap, you know, when I took over. But today, Gambia has a long-term, 30-year long-term development plan which somebody can just flip through, and if it makes sense, uh, that's okay. So it will be difficult for anybody to identify where we are coming from and where we are, we are heading. The beautiful thing is that Abia is today the third best state in Nigeria in terms of um, multidimensional poverty index. Um, Abia is the second best in the entire southeast in terms of um, maternal and infant mortality today abia under my watch reduced maternal mortality by 71 percent and increased um, attendance in primary health care by 35 percent um, abia state university is number two amongst the schools in nigeria we have done first position in wayek back to back for about five years or so so these numbers, these numbers cannot be a fluke. We were able to reverse enrollment 
back from private schools to public schools by over 600 percent so these numbers cannot be a fluke we are the safest state certainly in this sub-region these statistics cannot be a fluke so there must be something there must be something how come that this is an oasis of peace hmm. in the southeast so how did you how do come? It? leave that word for yeah. whoever out there how did you manage having this level of peace in your state so the person can continue from there three pronged approach you must speak to youth engagement because the energy they need to work is the energy they also used for crime so engage them so for me it is about energy management engagement um, and you must engage them in things they like to do shoe garments i have um, an ict hub where uh, at every instance you have over 250 youths trying their hands on the computer officially i provide broadband internet access to them for them and all of that and they are there in Aba, and they are doing marvelous things I have somebody who graduated from that uh, um, group who is worth about 10 million US dollars today. He has located to UK, wow. you know, because he developed an app for something and they bought it and all, all, all from Abba here, yeah. you know. So you, you must do that. And then um, this capacity building for them, uh, E4E, uh, Education for Employment Programs. And you now... That is one leg. The other leg is to deepen your intelligence and your intelligence gathering um, apparatus. And the final one, which everybody sees, is the kinetic approach. You know, and then in this kinetic approach, you must also, because this is a democratic dispensation, you must be on hand yeah. to make sure that you see what the law enforcement officers are doing and to control high-handedness and the interface between the people and law enforcement officers. Because we've been forced to put soldiers out there in the public space, which is not supposed to be ordinarily. So there has to be somebody who moderates what they do and how they engage. Many people do not know, perhaps this is about the first or second time I'm revealing it to the public. The traffic lights, of course, we were the first people that put traffic lights in Harvard. The traffic lights on some locations on our streets has CCTV cameras. Hmm. But these are things that ordinarily one should advertise on the television. But we refrain from such because what do I want to achieve? Is it the mileage in terms of security or the mileage in terms of publicity? Hmm. Publicity can wait. Let me achieve my result. I cannot be going to war against you. And because I love publicity, I come out and tell you the capacity of my armament. Is it to enable you to prepare better mm. or what? Mm. Some of my brother governors on the day they launched the bag went full blast on air and it was credited to them as success. But at the end of the day, is it achieving what you set out so to achieve? achieve. Uh -huh. mm. But the day I launched the bag, I launched them quietly. And, and, and you have been able to utilize the, Exactly. The, the I launched them quietly and gave them Monday because I asked them, I asked myself, what do I want to use them for? I cannot be arming them against their kinsmen. That's not what it is. Mm -hmm. you know. So, um, these are some of the things. The rest are content in that. That's why I say, you know, yeah. what we're doing with you today is not necessarily an interview. We, we embarked on a fact-finding mission mm -hmm. to our state. Mm -hmm. And we have gathered a lot, really. And uh, we're privileged to also be part of your last day in office. Yes, that is so, for us, it's a, it's a privilege and we yes. appreciate it. And we have a special gift for you. Because on camera, I told my crew that, yeah, when we did the Nigeria Right Now Colloquium and Awards Night, we considered those governors from the six geopolitical zones who yes. have done well. Mm -hmm. um, we also thought that, okay, it's not enough to go by the reports in the media, like you rightly say. Mm -hmm. uh, what about those who are not out there in the media? You're one of those. That's why we embarked on the fact finding mission. And after we did all this, we agree with the board of. Uh, directors of the award that Rukiz Bazo haven't kept his state sanely safe, peaceful, and all of that, that in governance, welfare and security of lives and property is key in governance, so that you have succeeded in these areas, and so that you deserve to be given the award for 
best governor southeast Thank and you. i know that this is a surprise and i am happy that he's coming you. on your last day in oh, office yeah. please sir, uh, accept this little gift this is appreciating a man who has worked thank you you did well sir thank you. and we appreciate you thank you please. thank you thank you thank you congratulations wow wow congratulations. wow what, what what a day to receive <laughs> congratulations <our> <laughs> thank you thank you very much sir. thank you we thank appreciate you. you thank you and may god keep you in uh, good health amen I haven't served in the other bless you sir. thank you thank you sir mm. thank you sir <laughs> <laughs> thank you sir May the next government succeed. Yes. I also say, may God bless Okezie Ibazo. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. God bless.